Welcome back to r slash neighbors from hell, where people share stories about their crazy neighbors. And if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe to join our amazing community. And without any further ado, let's dive right into the stories. The first one is titled, try to evict me with fake documents, bad idea. Oh boy, I never thought I would be one having to post a story like this. Me and my wife had recently bought our first home as we were extremely excited about it. Unlike what I'm assuming most buying experiences go like, we did not see a previous owner or anything because the house was foreclosed on and we bought it directly from the bank. It was in our budget and we loved it, so we moved in right away not even thinking about what could have happened to the previous owner. The first six months were fantastic until we heard a knock on the door and I opened it to see a woman standing there. Me? Can I help you? The woman ran under my arm and right into the house. Wife? Excuse me, what are you doing here? Woman? I live here, you two get the hell out of my house. I am extremely confused but I try to get information out of her. Me? We bought this house so we own it. We have for the last six months. Woman? Well, it was my house a year ago so you two leave. I now understand that this must be the previous owner that got her house foreclosed on her. I wanted to try and talk to her but she seemed erratic so I signaled my wife to go in the bedroom and call the police. When they got there, before I could say a word, the woman started saying how me and my wife broke into her house. Policeman, is this true sir? Me? Not in the slightest officer. We own this house and I can show you the deed. She is the previous owner that got the property foreclosed on her. They make the crazy woman leave and I hope that that will be the end of her, but of course it isn't though and for the next year she comes to the house every few months and starts banging on the doors. We got one of those ring cameras so we can see that it is her and not let her in and threaten to call the police on her. This causes her to go running for the hills but then she finds another way to try and bother us. That comes in the form that she is having her mail sent to our house. It is not just stupid mail either, we are talking about medical information, bills, important notices, I have no idea why she is doing this and I go to the post office and explain that she doesn't live here anymore and is just sending her mail to our address. He says that he will look into it and in the meantime I request my mail be sent to a PO box because I am worried she's going to try and go riffling through my mailbox for her stuff. I get important private information too that I wouldn't want her stealing, so I get a key and every couple of days on the way home from work I go and pick up the mail, sift out her stuff and tell them that it is not her mail. One day I find out that my key stopped working and I go to find out that woman showed up with a fake deed to the house and wanted to get it changed. The person working that morning did not see about the dispute and ended up changing the lock and giving her a key. I had it changed right away but it turns out she got away with that day's worth of mail. I was sick of this crap and decided I was going to take her to court for mail theft, trespassing and using a fake deed to claim ownership of the house. When we finally got to court though I figure out what that crazy lady was trying to steal the mail for. She was using it to try to prove that the house was hers and she was living in it. Woman, see this mail has my name and address on it, plus I have the deed, so they are squatting in my home. I want you to have them evicted, I haven't been able to live in my home for over a year because of them. Judge, I'm comparing the two deeds and it is clear that the one you have is fake. It's an old deed and the date has been altered on it. Woman, do you not even see the mail that has my name on it? Judge, that doesn't show proof that you are living at that address. It just shows that you were marking it as your residence even though it isn't. The woman shut up after this and the judge looked over all of our evidence including the door camera footage and her stealing the mail out of my P.O. box. In the end, the judge granted us a restraining order and said if she tries to come up to the property again to call the police and they will have her arrested. They also confiscated her fake deed so she couldn't use it to try and pull another fast one on somebody and pretend the house belongs to her. Finally, they stopped all mail with her name on it from coming to our house so we could stop paying for the P.O. box and get back to normal. 
You would think it would end there and after a judge warned the woman would back off, but nope, only a few months later she was back to banging on our door again, telling us to get out of our house. This time we did what the judge said and we called the police without warning her and they showed up to take her away. I have no idea what they did to her, but I do know that we haven't heard from her since. Maybe she was arrested or maybe she finally got it through her crazy head that she cannot violate a restraining order without getting into some serious trouble. Either way, I am extremely happy that she hasn't been back and the mail we get now only has our names on it. As far as the costs for all of this, our home insurance covered the lawyer so we didn't have to pay a dime for him. The PO box cost us a little bit of money, but it was honestly worth it to stop this woman from going through our mail for a little while. In the end, the advice I have for anyone else in this situation is to not wait as long as we did for something like this to escalate and instead shut it down right away because there is no deal with crazy when it literally comes banging on your door. I gotta say, ripe stars, I sort of feel bad for the woman in the story, the one that is crazy and banging on the door, because I can definitely understand how you can have an emotional connection to a house that was foreclosed on. Obviously, that does not excuse her behavior, but I know that that can be a very difficult position to be in. My family, like over 20 years ago, had been in a similar position where our house was foreclosed on and then sold, I suppose by the bank, because my memory is not that great from back then, I was really young, and the bank sold it at an auction. So I can understand sort of where this woman is coming from, but obviously we weren't as crazy as her and went back to the new owners to cause them trouble or something. And the next one is titled, I'm not your secretary. A couple years ago I worked for a small team within a larger organization that ran a rather niche grant program. It was literally my boss, let's call him Charles, me and two part-time consultants who did our finances and bookkeeping. My boss and I had a great rapport, he hired me to essentially run large aspects of our program and gave me pretty much unilateral oversight of the key elements of it from program design and development to execution. He was a great manager in this respect, he provided a lot of mentoring and guidance but mostly got out of my way and only wanted me to escalate the big stuff that I felt rose to the level. While I didn't love the job itself, I loved having so much freedom. I was sort of bridging that gap of moving from a young professional into a mid-career professional and so this offered a lot of growth opportunities. One thing that made my boss great was that he always had my back. One day I was in the office pretty much alone, my boss was on the board of a few organizations and he was off at a half day meeting. Our offices were right across from each other so I could typically see him when he came and left and I could hear his phone when it rang. That morning his phone was ringing and ringing and ringing and finally my phone rang as well. It was the executive director, ED from here on out, of one of the organizations we worked with, an older man, maybe in his 70s, the conversation went something like this. Me, OP speaking, how can I help you? ED sounding frustrated, I've been calling Charles all morning, but he's not answering. Me, yes, he's at a half day board meeting, is there something I can help you with? ED, I doubt it, maybe you could just check his calendar and put a call with me on there for when he's back. Me, I'm sorry, I wish I could, but I don't have access to his calendar. I'm sure he will be back soon. ED cuts me off. That is unacceptable. How does this secretary not have access to his calendar? Who sets his meetings? Now here is the thing, while I am my boss's employee, I am not his secretary. I don't have access to his calendar and my boss sets his own meetings. Not only that, but I had corresponded with and even met this ED in the past. My signature blog and business card clearly says program manager as does my bio on our webpage. Alas, this was not the first time someone had assumed that I was my boss's secretary, it just happens. I was in my late 20s at the time and as a young professional woman working for a man, it seemed like a common misconception. Usually it's not a big deal, normally I clarify my role and people feel a little embarrassed and we go on about our lives. So I clarified my role for the ED. 
Me, just to clarify, I'm not Charles' secretary. He doesn't have a secretary. I'm actually the program manager. Charles manages his schedule on his own. If you want to shoot us both an email, I'll make sure that he responds and sets up a time to talk to you. Otherwise, when he comes back, I will let him know you called so you can arrange a meeting. ED cuts me off again. Well, I have an important question for him, and it is unacceptable that I cannot set up a meeting with him, and I also cannot get an answer to it right away. How is this good client service? Me? Well, you know, I'm the program manager. Why don't you tell me what your question is about, and let's see if I can help you. The ED explained that he called to talk about the application process and requirements for a program of ours, one that I actually ran. Not only that, but the nature of his questions were not so complicated that it necessitated escalating it to my boss. These were things I could easily help him with. Me? Well, you're in luck. I'm actually the one who runs that program and not Charles. I've designed that application process and I would actually be able to answer your questions with a lot more detail than Charles would. He would just defer you to me. Why don't you tell me what questions you have and I can answer them. ED, long pause and then in a patronizing tone. Young lady, I'm sure you're very bright and I'm sure you want to be helpful, but I would really prefer to talk to Charles. Why don't you just take a message for him for me, okay? Now I am kind of pissed. I'm about to tell him where he can shove his message when I see my boss coming down the hallway. So I tell the ED that he's in luck. I see Charles now. Let me go tell him that you're on the line and get back to you. So I put the ED on hold and intercept my boss. I kinda explain the situation. My boss chuckles to himself and says, transfer him over. I transfer the call and I can hear my boss pick up the phone. Charles, Chuck speaking. Oh, hi there, ED. How can I help you? Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, I was at a half-day board meeting. Mm -hmm. You have a question about which program? Okay, what's your question? Mm -hmm. You want to know about the application process and criteria? Uh-huh. Okay, well, you have spoken to my program manager, OP. Yeah? Ah, uh, well, she's actually the one who manages that program. Yes, she actually designed the application process. Sorry, ED, I wouldn't be able to answer that specific question. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I don't know the answer to that. Yes, that's right. OP manages that entire program and she's really the expert on it. Let me go see if she's in her office. I hear my boss put the phone on hold. He takes a long pause before he gets back on. Charles, I'm sorry, ED, but it appears she must have stepped away from her desk. Why don't you send her an email and I'm sure she will get back to you. No, again I'm sorry, but she's really leading on that program. You will have to speak with her. I could transfer you to her voicemail if you wish. No? Okay. Do you have her email? Great. So send her an email and I'm sure she will get back to you on all your questions ASAP. The ED did not email me for a couple days and when he finally did, I helpfully walked him through all the details of the program he was interested in. And ripe stars, if you have ever dealt with douchebags like that in your own life, then I would really appreciate it if you could also share your own stories either in the comments or on r slash ripe stories on reddit where there is a good chance that I might read them in a video. And by the way, while you're at it, I would also really appreciate it if you could like the video if you want to support the channel. Thank you so much, your support means the world to me and it helps me tremendously. And the next one is titled Boss Revenge. My boss, we will call him Steve, is one of those guys who is always attached to his email. Whether he is at his desk or answering them from his phone, he will stop the conversation immediately and read the email. No warning, the sound will go off, he will stop mid-sentence and read and reply to every email. This annoys me a lot. While going over a very important project, well into the 40 to 50 million dollar range and long term, I am briefing him on talking points and covering the powerpoint on the projector. A few slides in, he gets an email. Immediately Steve pulls out his phone and begins reading and replying. I have dealt with this for years and this is where the revenge begins. I am on slide 6 and while he is buried in his phone, I progress the slide to 13 and patiently wait for him to end. He looks up, oblivious to my trickery, mind you, he has to present this within a few hours to top tier business management and this is a project that we've been working on for months. I finish briefing him on the rest of the slides, we take lunch and eventually the guests arrive for their briefing. 
Steve is taking charge of the meeting and I retreat to my office where I can still clearly watch the presentation but don't have to participate. Steve's hobnobbing, talking our guests up, laughing and joking. As he is talking to one particular VP, he gets an email and in his normal fashion, he stops mid-conversation and reads it. The VP didn't like this, not one bit. He interrupts Steve's email reply with a hand wave and a, let's continue. This is where I get my second idea for revenge. Eventually, Steve gets to the PowerPoint presentation, yammering on like he is the one who spent all the time on the fancy fly-ins, formatting, research, etc. until he gets to slide 7. I can see him pause, break his jovial manner and begins reading word for word what is on the slide. He is no longer chipper and poised, he is floundering. Little does Steve know that I'm about to launch an email war on his psyche that he is ill prepared for. See, since I've been in my office I've been collecting all the emails that came in that needed replies, drafted the replies and have them sitting on my desktop. I have cc'd Steve to every one of them because I'm just that good of an employee. As he skips to the next slide I send the first email, I hear his phone jingle, he pauses and instinctively reaches for his phone, throwing him off his presentation. He looks around and then continues, a minute later I send the next email and then after a short pause, the next and the next, I can see him sweating bullets, his brain imaging some catastrophic failure somewhere in our building, in shipping, in product sourcing etc. But he cannot check his emails without breaking from the presentation and pissing off the executives. It is still going on, I have about 8 more emails to send and he has about an hour until he will be able to slink away and cower over his phone like Gollum holding the one ring. I am glad I went to work today. Edit, Steve is an over the top kind of guy, he wants to know everything, it is common for me to cc him on important emails, he has not caught on yet. I also fixed the spelling of Gollum. Update, I just made myself a bagel with cream cheese, it was delicious, the meeting is still progressing, I have sent a few more emails and have drafted more. Update 2, the powerpoint is finished and I have set up the next part of the program, the video conference. No one has taken a break yet except Steve. He had to go to the bathroom and was in there for at least 10 minutes, he responded to two of my emails. Update 3, Steve came into the office to see if I can run for some food for everyone. I told him I was really bogged down with emails but I'm sure I can find some time. Update 4, I've sent 57 emails to him today, only one directly. I have rescheduled the janitorial service which was 4 emails alone plus their responses. I've sent an email to the entire staff and local regional team, over 100 people, requesting computer info for a software integration project and instructed everyone to email myself and Steve with their results. Update 5, holy end of the world, Steve's phone died and he forgot his charger. I heard him banging around his office, let out an exasperated sigh and then head for mine. I quickly plucked in my company phone, sure enough he wants to borrow my charger. Sorry Steve, my phone is almost dead and I have a conference call in 20 minutes. The look on his face and the air of defeat around him is palpable. I think he is going into withdrawal, he has honestly pulled his phone from his holster 3 or 4 times, either to make sure it was really dead or because he is feeling phantom vibration notifications. And ripe stars, with this we have reached the end of the video, however if you still cannot get enough of my content then I would highly suggest to check out my endless binge watch playlist which will soon show up in the left corner of the screen. In addition I would really appreciate it if you could not only subscribe to the channel but also turn on the bell notifications which you can do by clicking on the little bell icon right next to the subscribe button. This will help my channel tremendously and this will make sure that you don't miss any of my videos. Furthermore if you want to see additional ripe content that I don't post on YouTube then I would suggest to head on over to patreon.com slash ripe YouTube for more than 50 50 exclusive videos that you will not see anywhere else. Thank you so much for your amazing daily support and I hope to see you again tomorrow.